Rwanda raises military's alertness as stray bullet from Congo conflict hits civilian. Rwanda has heightened the alertness of its military forces along the common border with the Democratic Republic of Congo. This was after a stray bullet from clashes between militia groups in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo injured a Rwandan civilian across the border. Rwanda's Office of the Government spokesperson said the incident occurred on Monday at 12.30 p.m. in Iluavu sector in Rwanda's western province. A civilian was injured by a stray bullet originating from clashes among the coalition of Kinshasa-backed illegal armed groups in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo close to the Rwandan border, the statement said. The injured man is receiving treatment in the Chanzare Health Center in Lubavu. The incident came high on the heels of intense fighting between Wazalendo and M23 armed rebel movements reportedly backed by DRC and Rwanda respectively. The M23 which had been dislodged from the strategic town of Kichanga by Wazalendo this past weekend conducted a counter-attack recovering most of the lost territories. Alarmed by the M23 advance, several militia groups held a rally near the border with Rwanda, with some of their members calling for war against the government of President Paul Kagame. In Kinshasa, authorities accused Rwanda of helping M23 with new weapons and special forces operators to conduct operations against Wazalendo, a claim Kigali denies. On the other hand, Rwanda officials said M23 had recovered modern arms and drones from Wazalendo forces. Rwanda said in a statement last night that it was deeply concerned by the ongoing support and corroboration of the government of the DRC with FDRL, other illegal armed groups and foreign mercenaries, which is escalating provocative, provocative actions along the Rwandan border in violation of the Luanda and the Nairobi processes. Rwanda further said it would maintain defensive and preventive mechanism to guard against violations of our space and borders and counter any spillover into Rwanda from any armed group in order to ensure the security and safety of Rwandan citizens and residents. UN peacekeepers in Mali on Monday left their camp in the tense Kido region under a withdrawal order by the troubled country's military leaders. UN and local sources said the pullout of the UN stabilization mission, also known as MINUSMA, has ignited fears that fighting will intensify between troops and armed factions for control of the territory. On Sunday, the mission announced it had accelerated its departure the day before from the Tessalit camp in an extremely tense and degraded security context that endangered the lives of its personnel. Monday's withdrawal is the second in the Kido region and the seventh in the country. Zimbabwe has natural resources that include nearly 40 different minerals and one of the world's larger deposits of di diamonds. Yet, the vast majority of Zimbabweans continue to live in poverty. Columbus Mavunga visits the country's famous Marenge diamond fields and talks with residents who want, average, who want average people to benefit more from the country's mineral wealth. The Marenge fields of Zimbabwe is home to one of the world's largest diamond deposits. The precious gems were first mined here in 2006. The government-owned Zimbabwe Consolidated Diamond Company says it is working to increase production so that all citizens can reap the benefits of mining the gems, according to spokesman Sugar Chagonda. And I'm sure we are doing this by way of making sure that we contribute to community development, be it in terms of employment, employing locals, also infrastructure development, uh, sport and recreation, as well as uh, general amenities, which is quite good. And we are also um, extending to the province. 
Uh, ultimately, the idea is to make sure that the diamonds, they benefit the entire country, which is also in sync with the vision of, uh, of the government. But the benefits have yet to reach people living nearby, says resident Atro Mshangwizam, who has lived near the Marange fields his whole life. In this diamond mining area, there is a problem, Mushangwiza says. Children are missing school because their parents are failing to pay fees. He says we hope that the diamonds can benefit the local children more through schools in the diamond mining area by reducing fees or paying their fees. That's our major concern. So the children have a great future. Zimbabwe Consolidated Diamond Company says it has started building schools with science labs to improve local children's education. But schooling isn't the only problem that Zimbabweans want diamonds to solve. They say the industry should help the economy more. The problem is that the sector lacks transparency, says Center for Natural Resources, governance director Farai Magu. The diamond sector is now subject to extreme organized crime um, and, and, and the, 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 the leaders are the only ones who know where the diamonds are going, how the diamonds are leaving the country, where the revenues are going. But as a citizenry, uh, we have been completely disconnected and cut out from any information regarding uh, the diamond industry. Getting that information would be one way to help Zimbabwean follow the example of Botswana, whose booming economy is largely built on diamonds, according to economist Prosper Chitambaram with the Labor and Economic Development Research Institute of Zimbabwe. The second one being a beneficiation of those minerals, in other words, moving up the value chain through an industrialization based process. So I think those two factors are important in terms of ensuring that uh, the ordinary citizen actually gets to benefit from uh, those resources. Currently, Zimbabwe ranks a distant seventh in worldwide diamond production, despite having diamond fields roughly the size of Luxembourg. Columbus Mavunga, Viewing News, Marange, Zimbabwe. Zambia's main opposition patriotic front PF party has announced the suspension of several prominent members for carrying out activities that the party says undermine unity and brought the group into disrepute. Those affected include three members of parliament and the national chairman of the party, Davis Chama, and parliamentarian Miles Sampa. Sampa is threatening to hold a competing general conference under the patriotic front, a move that the leaders of the party say is illegal. For more on the suspensions, the U.S. Peter Clotty reached Rafael Nasinda, the General Secretary of the Patriotic Front. They have brought the name of the party into dispute, and to that effect, there have been allegations, petitions against their standing within the party. And yesterday, having held the Central Committee uh, a meeting, those uh, members as uh, matters were brought to central committee and for purposes of upholding upholding the norms and ethics and procedures of the party they were asked to step aside by way of them being suspended from all party activities or indeed any participation on their part in party activities until such a time that the disciplinary processes are concluded that is the decision that was made yesterday What's the next step after the suspension? Because there are suggestions that it's too sudden and it's too abrupt. So how do you explain to the population or your supporters about why you, the Central Committee or the party decided to take this decision? I'd be surprised if anybody uh, said it is too sudden and uh, people are not aware because the activities of these colleagues have been in public domain. The only thing that has seen that or has uh, created an impression that we have uh, been very slow at taking action is the fact that uh, there is always a demand within our strategy for us to follow the cause of natural justice. And to that effect, you know, the sooner procedures needed to be followed and adhered to strictly.
Otherwise, the membership across the country has been demanding that for purposes of preserving unity and discipline within the party, that uh, swift action should be taken against these members. Uh, it has taken us this long for us to arrive at this decision because of the internal processes that were being undertaken. Of course, some of these processes we were not pronouncing publicly because it wasn't necessary because we needed to give an opportunity for these colleagues to be heard. The only reason why it was necessary to make a pronouncement yesterday is because the general public and the membership across the country needed to know that by virtue of these suspensions, these colleagues are precluded from participating in party activities. Uh, Nakachinda, what do you say to those who are of the view that perhaps a reconciliation move or having a dialogue with some of these, your members, in order to try to right the wrongs or alleged wrongs they have committed, in order to have a form of unity, because politics in Zambia is by numbers, and having these people in your ranks who have been members for a long time really serve a significant purpose. First of all, reconciliation and uh, dialogue and making sure that um, in whatever action we take, we don't cross a line in uh, infringing on people's uh, democratic right to express themselves or in, indeed to undertake activities that they have the right and freedom to do is not infringed upon. Raphael Nakashinda is the 